Okay. Uh, 99 kilometers on her. Let's uh, let's go for a venture. Finally have it PDI'd. Finally have the ability to um, you know drive this vehicle with all the proper accessories on it. We did shoot a video earlier today um, putting on all the stuff. So um, I'll try to upload them in order. But if it doesn't, then that'll be uh, obvious once you see this vehicle with all the stuff on it. Um, we are be breaking in the vehicle. That is what the biggest uh, part of the lesson will be today. We. Um, we want to make sure that, uh, or I want to make sure that, um, let me know how that sounds. Um, when you break in this vehicle, I'm already seeing online a lot of the influencers and people that have this vehicle that maybe not have adhered as, as strictly to what GMs ask them to do. And so um, I thought it would be a good opportunity to establish what it is that you should be doing with this vehicle and um, how you can improve the uh, the chances of your vehicle lasting as, as long as possible and, and also increasing the horsepower rating of your vehicle. Keep in mind that when you're breaking in these vehicles, they're all um, unique in nature. And so um, when you break it in, you will literally uh, affect the, the horsepower rating to the wheels, um, depending on how, how good you are or how bad you are on the vehicle. You know, looking at some of these guys that are out there, um, one video I saw earlier today where the guy had wrapped his vehicle um, you know, he had 120 miles on his vehicle and he was hammering it. And that to me is not something that you want to be doing to your vehicle because it's really going to cause um, maybe an increased amount of wear, especially when you're going over the $4,000 tack. Um, the tachometer right now has a solid red line at about four and a half grand. And um, you really should adhere to that. It's not going to be the end of the world if you go over it a bit. But, uh, you know, for, for the most part, you want to make sure that you respect that this vehicle has uh, all the time in the world to be able to use that power down the road but for the first 500 miles or 800 kilometers you really should respect that and so on the engine side of it I touched upon it in the first drive video that we have uploaded where uh, we're literally breaking the vehicle in we're making sure that the, the gears can symbiotically mesh together and um, and have a nice flow and, and, and be able to, to co-adhere uh, nice and easily just like we're gonna do that with the brakes so the pads and the rotors uh, kind of mesh together perfectly because right now they may not there might be little striations in one direction over the other and so we're gonna be literally burnishing the brakes or um, cadence breaking it to get them to, to, to be nice and and evenly made it so that when you do tap on the brakes you get a nice bite out of them so um, to start from scratch on what we would do on a break-in period with a Corvette um, first things first we would respect the tachometer we would not go over the red line too many times um, we would want to keep the throttle input at an assertive amount so that was about 40 to 50 percent um, you know throttle you really you really shouldn't go anything above 80 uh, they call that spirited driving and I've already noticed that when you do go spirited with this it will go over the, the tachometer of where you should be going so this car is gonna still let you be the boss but that doesn't mean that you should be abusing it so uh, again you're gonna be the one that determines what the rating of your vehicle is like and I think that's really cool I think that's amazing that you have a say in what the outcome of your vehicle's horsepower output will be um, I'm not gonna say it's a drastic amount you're not gonna lose 20 horsepower if you hammer on the gears um, maybe prove me wrong if that's if that's something that we find out but as of right now I haven't seen a, you know a massive change but it's still something to note um, the tires the tires are something that are brand new they've been vulcanized in a big kiln system and so the outside coating on them is very hard um, that's gonna make it so that when you do turns and you accelerate or you uh, are trying to do a full launch uh, there's not gonna be as much grip out of it right now we have um, eight degrees Celsius temperature. So we are above the um, the working area of where these tires are rated to work in. Um, but that doesn't make it any better than um, if it was uh, if it was cold out. You really should treat this vehicle like almost you're, like you're in uh, rain. You know, treat it like there's a, a very slippery surface because uh, the tires right now can't really put up with a lot. Uh, you wanna make sure that you wear them out evenly. So don't do any burnouts and stuff like that. You see a lot of people in dealerships that uh, shoot videos of them doing a burnout on the lot or maybe when they get home that's gonna wear out your rear tires uh, unevenly from your front tires and therefore you're not gonna have an even wear in on them so avoid trying to do the burnouts if you can so I went over the tack there a bit you know what I might do is uh, put this in manual mode and that way I can avoid that from happening 
first opportunity of kind of hammering through the gears and already I'm going way too fast. <laughs> On the highway now and uh, I want to go through the dash interface with you guys one observation that I've already made in the first hundred kilometers that I've been driving it is the screen has some coating on it that is new age technology because I uh, have been touching the screen quite a bit calibrating it I have not cleaned my screen since I started making those videos the other day um, you know going through integrating it and I can't honestly see one single smudge on this entire display screen and um, you know what, I just had an idea. I bet you I can turn this display off so that you can see any smudge. There is not a single thing on there. That is unbelievable. There's some kind of coding or technology that's on here that is allowing it so that uh, fingerprints are not showing as, as much as on any other product I've ever seen. Um, it kind of reminds me of when you first get an iPhone. Um, there is kind of a coating that they have on there that eventually will wear off. With this vehicle being always in here, I have a feeling that that's going to last a lot longer than it would on a new iPhone. Um, again, I don't know the exact name for the technology, but I can definitely tell that there's something on here for anti-smudge technology, which is good to know. Um, drivability. I've got only a, a little bit of time behind the wheel so far, but I can already tell that this vehicle is definitely made for driving long distances. Uh, I have it in the my mode, and if you forgot what that was, my my mode on this vehicle is a track exhaust, touring, steering, suspension is also in touring, and then for brake response, I'm going to keep it always in the sport mode just until I get used to it, because I don't really have a, a, a need to want to change that braking point on every single mode. So that's my my mode. If I ever am driving in the vehicle and I don't mention what mode I'm in, I'm just going to be in a my mode, or you'll see a little uh, icon down here in the bottom of the display. Uh, telling you that I'm in the my mode. You guys mentioned uh, in my previous video that you saw that my service uh, tire monitor system was on. I actually uh, was tracking my vehicle with OnStar to see where Freddie was on his way up and when I was tracking it I noticed that my TPM was on. It was one of the first things that I saw on the OnStar diagnostics report as well and so uh, when we were doing the PDI vehicle videos this morning uh, Bill and I tried to relearn it with the new Global B relearning sensor and it did not work. So from the factory, my TPM sensor was not functional. Uh, so we're going to have to take my tire off, order a new um, TPM sensor and install that in a later video. And um, we'll keep you updated on that. So I, I've acknowledged all those people that are concerned about that tire monitor system. It's not from us modifying the rims or doing anything like that. It was even from the factory that... that, um, that faulty light. So I apologize General Motors for throwing you under the bus, but I'm going to put the blame on you guys for this one. Um, getting back to just the drivability, I talked about it in a previous uh, video, but the, um, the the grip points on these paddle shifters are just exceptional. I, I just love having these little thumb grips right here and being able to hold it nice and tight. Um, at the stop lights, I've already noticed that sometimes I'll grab the top here, but for the most part, I'm holding the steering wheel right here and it feels just at home. Um, I'm going to put it in manual mode just to start shifting through the gears. So that was 7th gear, this is 8th, and just lightning quick. Amazing how fast this is uh, able to, to switch the gears. One other thing that I read in the owner's manual, and I'm going to try it out here for the first time, is if you were to uh, want to get it into the prime gear to, to shift to have the right amount of torque, you can hold down the lower side going to drop it to the perfect gear for you to be able to accelerate. Overall ambient noise inside the vehicle right now is exceptionally quiet. Uh, I don't really know if, um, if there's really anything that I can do to increase or decrease the ambient noise inside of here with the, the Bose sound system. There is noise cancelling technology that's on here. I haven't done any research or looking into seeing if uh, the certain modes are going to increase or decrease the sound deadening. I have a feeling that when you have this in stealth mode that the exhaust is going to be uh, deadened down and there won't be any noise that's funneled through to the vehicle. Also seen in some videos that the uh, the back screen here also uh, is something that will change up. When you're on the highway and you're in the braking mode, you're going to want to make sure that you don't uh, keep it at the same speed for very, very long. 
it's not the speed that you need to worry about, it's more about where the gear is. So what you can do if you're wanting to keep within a certain speed is you can just change up the gears and start pulling from a different gear at a, at a, at a certain time. Um, overall, you know, with this being in touring mode right now, the ride is exceptional. Uh, we're on a nice smooth highway right now and uh, I can get used to this very quickly. I'm very impressed and happy with how this is riding so far. Uh, ear to ear excitement with this. Wow, first time on a road trip. Uh, you know, just like Chevrolet says, find new roads and this thing has definitely made to find them. Uh, I can't wait to go on a, a road trip with this vehicle and, and have you guys come along for it. Um, I've gone through the steering wheel. I also noted about the, teller, the touch screen display and how uh, it kind of holds up to the smudges and stuff a lot better than I've seen any other display screen do. Uh, and I want to go through the heads up now. I have a feeling that you're not going to be able to see this. If you do see this right now, then that's awesome. Um, congratulations, you're going to be able to go through this video and it will make sense. Um, on the side over here, you have your dash information display and then you have your heads up display over here. And uh, I can change around a bunch of the different things inside of the sub menu. And already, um, I was kind of blown away with the, 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 the amount of pieces of information that they're able to give you. Uh, the brightness and something like that is something that you can see from, from the older models, but the amount of colors that they had in there, and then also how information is displayed to you and the amount of um, animations that it have, miles above anything that I've seen. It's also a 15 inch heads up display. I believe that the last one was a 12 inch display, so it's a lot larger as well. Uh, when I'm in the vehicle, I can definitely appreciate having a larger heads up display for me to, to be able to look at. Um, up here, the, the visibility is a lot better. Uh, I do note that uh, when I'm looking down at the highway, I can see almost immediately uh, it cut off to the road, except for a little bit of a fender hump right over there. It is so cool to think that I'm, you know, looking like kind of like Superman, where I'm, I'm driving and uh, all I can see is road in front of me. That is definitely a big benefit of having a front engine vehicle, or, I'm sorry, mid engine vehicle, um, having so much more visibility of the road in front of you. Um, I'm trying to answer as many questions as I can, and there's a lot of people that are asking me about um, the, the performance ratings of this vehicle, the zero to 60 time. I'm gonna get into that at a later time. As of right now, what I wanna focus on for the most part are the daily driven uh, usability things and then also the break-in time. Right now, uh, the vehicle is in my mode, and you'll also notice that the uh, vehicle is in the cylinder deactivation. There is dynamic fuel management on a lot of our vehicles now, but this vehicle does not have it. It just does the uh, cylinder deactivation on half the the, uh, the cylinders like it did in the previous one. So it is not the upgraded one like you'll see on some of our other V8 engines. Um, shutting down half the cylinders is for a lot of obvious reasons. We have uh, a philosophy called displacement on demand. And what that means is, is that if we don't need to have the vehicle running in all cylinders, then we would rather shut down a very reliable, naturally aspirated vehicle over having a very complex turbocharged uh, force induction engine um, because you're gonna notice right away that when you do exert extra um, you know, amount of throttle input or you're trying to do spirited driving as they keep saying in the owner's manual, it's gonna make your fuel economy exponential. It's not getting old. <laughs> I love it. thing that I, I kind of can't get my head around how they do it I, I'm not an engineer for any means but the ability to apply a hundred percent torque I'm not gonna do it because we're breaking stage but the ability to apply torque and shift these gears lightning quick through this corners or any acceleration all these undulations in the road look at how composed this Corvette is it's unbelievable I'm just blown away with the performance and being able to shift halfway through a corner you, you shouldn't really do that when you're when you're uh, 
actually racing, but the fact that you can do that and the composure of the vehicle isn't gonna be all over the place, that's something that I definitely couldn't have done in my manual uh, transmission on the seven, uh, C7 generation. So we're on some rougher roads here. We still have it in touring mode. Haven't even put this thing into uh, sport mode yet. I, I really wanna get accustomed to the modes as I, I get more intense, as I get more acclimated with the vehicle. Uh, but right off the bat, just the ability to have these lightning quick gear shifts while going through corners and changing the uh, ride height of the vehicle and, and where the weight is going from the front to the back, that is uh, one of the reasons why we needed to go to a mid-engine is because the performance out of this vehicle is miles above. It's a lot more composed. It's not as dramatic of a vehicle. Okay, um, I wanna talk about the transmission and uh, I found a cool little road to be able to show you what I mean about having this vehicle be composed and uh, able to shift even in a in a turn. This has got a dual clutch transmission, which is new territory for General Motors. Um, it's not something that I uh, have any issues or concerns about after driving this vehicle, even with only 150 kilometers on it. Uh, they've knocked it out of the park. Uh, this is just an exceptional transmission, and it really blows all of my um, my uh, upset you know, little grumbles about having no manual transmission on this vehicle. And this is coming from someone that had an M7 on the C7. So uh, what is an automatic transmission that's dual clutch? Well, what it means is, is that there's two four speed automatic transmissions that are beside each other. And in between them are two clutch plates. And what that means is, is that the vehicle can shift between each individual uh, transmission and allow it to have 100% of the power when it's transitioning from one gear to the other. That is something that we have never had the ability to have on a GM or a Corvette. And when I'm shifting through these gears, having the ability to have power being put down is not something that you could have done with a manual transmission because you would have had to put the clutch in to get it out of gear and then put it into a new one. I'm just gonna quickly sneak around and do a little UE here. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that. So we are in manual mode and I'm gonna go through the gears here and let the vet do the talking. I found the perfect place in London, Ontario. Again, uh, make sure you you know your tires are, are brand new. This is still the braking stage. Don't don't be too risky on it. I'm not doing anything more than about 4.4 uh, of a G in these corners. Uh, anything more than that, it wouldn't be really necessary. On the topic of Gs, you can pull just over one G if you wanted to in this vehicle. With it being eight degrees Celsius outside and these being brand new tires, I'm not even gonna come close to that. I wanna be as defensive as possible and almost imagine that the vehicle is driving on water or, high, or glass or, or hydroplaning just because the, the grip is non-existent at this point in the vehicle. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that little skit about the transmission. Keep in mind that um, uh, this is uh, a performance vehicle and we want to have the best tr possible transmission that we can have and that's the reason why we don't have a manual one is because from a cost perspective with the amount of people that were even interested in getting uh, a manual transmission it didn't make any sense and uh, th there is no need for it after driving this and this is coming from somebody that loves a manual transmission so I hope that helps in clarifying a little bit more about the vehicle and the transmission that it has on it. Thanks a lot and happy motoring.